Well, let's talk about something. We're, we're music fans, and that's one thing I always like whenever we get a chance to chat is it's not, you know, Rob the metal god and, and Chris the, you know, wrestling guy or whatever. We're music fans deep down inside and always will be. And obviously, I can't start this interview without asking about the the effect of Eddie Van Halen's passing uh, on you as a fan, as a, as a peer, as a musician. I mean, it doesn't get much bigger than that. I remember vividly when Dave Cork, who was one of the early managers of Judas Priest, came to my house and he banged on the door. He says, come to my car. I've, I've just had this cassette from this band that, that everybody's raving about in America. They're called Van Halen. You've got to listen to this guitarist. He's just unbelievable. So we sat outside in his car. It was like practically the middle of the night. And he put the cassette in and Eddie fired up and then the band fired up. And I'm like, oh my God, what is this, man? This is just <laughs> so... I've never heard anything like it in my life. Just blew me away. And I think we played the cassette two or three times because we were so mesmerized by Eddie's playing and, and what that very first Van Halen record was all about. So that was a thrill. And then fast forward a few years and we're in Santa Monica at the Civic Hall and we're opening a special guest for Van Halen. <laughs> and... Uh, so there it was, you know, and afterwards me and, me and Roth were hanging out and Eddie was hanging out with, uh, with Glenn and KK at the time talking guitars because guitar players always talk about guitars. Yes. <laughs> and uh, over the years, you know, Eddie would come to pre-shows and him and Glenn would always be chin-wagging about this guitar and this pickup and so on and so forth. So beautiful, cherished memories, Chris. And uh, as, as I said, I'm, I'm, you know, I've been saying just lately, it's another one of these terrible, terrible situations where we're losing these beautiful musicians for various reasons. Eddie's is, is so, so uh, you know, upsetting for lots of, lots of reasons. But again, we have to celebrate, don't we? Mm -hmm. As soon as he passed, I just started cranking out Van Halen. Yeah. Like when we lost Lemmy or Ronnie or, or Chris or any, or any of our great friends. This is the way we remember them, and they always live with us with their music. Yeah, I did that the other night. I just uh, I happened to be in a hotel room, and I just grabbed a bottle of vodka and just started looking through Van Halen on YouTube, going through all the classic gigs, all the eras. And, you know, next thing you know, it's 3.30 in the morning. You wake up, and you're like, holy shit, <laughs> yeah. man. That's, that's, that's the rock best and roll. Way. Best, <laughs> way to, best way to, to celebrate. you got to celebrate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's, it's natural to feel sad and upset, but celebrate because that's what music's about is a celebration one last thing about van halen is, is i was watching the us festival gig and still one of the the most monumental concerts of all time uh, in 83 and priest was on that bill uh what do you remember about about that day and about van halen set i don't know if you guys did a runner after the show if you stuck around how was it for you guys uh i don't think we got to see them i think the guy i think maybe glenn went, went and saw eddie because mm -hmm. it was a mad it was a mad day but they flew us in from a hotel off site because it was just insane. You couldn't, <laughs> you couldn't drive to the site. It was like a replication of, of Woodstock at that time because people were abandoning their cars, you know, and just legging mm -hmm. it to the, to the site. But we took a helicopter, all the bands took a helicopter ride, which is only a few minutes. Mm -hmm. And then the first thing we always remembered was seeing hundreds of thousands of cars just, you know, just like <laughs> everywhere. It was like the apocalypse. And then you go over that. You go over the hill, and you, you know Devore, you've played there a bunch of times mm -hmm. up in the alley. And uh, so then you see all this humanity, and you can't figure it out because it's just like all, all <laughs> hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people. But we landed, and of course, we went on at some that, that wonderful and godly time of a day for a festival. <laughs> and the, the searing sun is right in your face, and you're frying on stage. It's, so, it's like being in a welding metal shop. Uh, but it's great, man. I watched that bit on, on YouTube, and, mm -hmm. and the memories are so intense. And as you know, Chris, it, we added the three or four day event, the metal event was the most well attended. There's all these numbers thrown around, a couple of hundred thousand, three hundred thousand. There was a ton of people, mm -hmm. and uh, what what a great uh, what a great memory that is.